Hi everybody, my name is Dr. John Vorreth. My background is uh, as an ENT surgeon and I spent many of my early years in paediatric ENT at the Royal Children's Hospital, Melbourne. I am also the founder of Virotech and the inventor of the O-Scope. This is an O-Scope and it is a head-worn alternative to an operating microscope. It combines a converged optical system, which is also a feature of microscopes, and integrated LED lighting, which is comparable to a microscope. And the battery pack is also high-tech and lithium-ion. The essential use for the oscope is in clinic, where it is used all the time. Many surgeons use it frequently in the operating room as well. The oscope is used for a wide range of ENT and other procedures, including wax management, examination of eardrum, eardrum mobility, examination of mouth and pharynx, intranasal airway for procedures such as cautery of blood vessels in a nose, removal of ear polyps, foreign bodies in the ear, clearing infected material in otitis externa, myringotomy, insertion of ventilating tubes, and other nasal surgery such as turbinate reduction. In clinic, there are considerable advantages that the oscope has over a microscope. One of them is that it, because it's worn around the neck, it's always with the doctor, so you can very rapidly bring it into use without having to move the patient or reposition a microscope. Another one is that, and this is the most important one, if the target is moving, a microscope is difficult to relocate where a head-worn instrument can rapidly adjust for movement. This is a particularly important with small children who are not keeping still. It makes for a much more accurate and careful assessment. It is also very portable, so it's very easy to take it to other places in the hospital or anywhere else. Another appreciable advantage is the amount of time taken to perform examination and procedures. It is generally considerably quicker with an oscope than with a microscope and or a headlight. When there is any patient movement, a microscope will have to be repositioned and refocused, whereas with an oscope, the head can be moved much more quickly and because of the big depth of field, there is almost no refocusing. Another oscope advantage is that if a child is on the parent's knee and moving, it is still relatively easy to do an examination and procedures. And if the patient is in some awkward situation such as on a bed or in a cot in an emergency department, again, there is little trouble with the oscope, whereas the microscope is almost impossible. When it comes to magnification, a microscope uses a multiple lens system, which gives it a capability far in excess of that needed in an outpatient clinic. The disadvantage is a fixed working distance and a small depth of field. The oscope has less but adequate magnification. It uses a single lens system, which gives a big depth of field and binocular vision, which is important. It gets you much better acuity than just monocular vision and it allows procedures that can be quite small, like insertion of a ventilating tube or discovery and removal of a fishbone in a tonsil. Without a converged optical system, as found in a microscope and with the oscope, only one eye will be able to see into a narrow cavity such as an ear. This is a, an, a very important feature of an oscope. Loops are sometimes used for ear examination, but it is misleading to think that they are actually a binocular system. Because the optical pathways are not converged, if you shut one eye and then the other eye, you will rapidly find out you're only able to look down a narrow cavity such as an ear canal with one eye if you're using loops. Thus, in places where the oscope has been around for some time, such as Australia, no one will be using loops for ear work.